Good morning, my name is Helena Kramer and today I'm here to talk about the Australian fires. The most recently asked question has been whether the Australian fires can be classified as an ecological disaster. In my opinion, they can. From the information I've gathered, as well as top scientists confirming this with these five points, the first two, land and water, are focused on the local impact the fires have had on humans as well as animals. One billion animals have been wiped out across Australia, being killed or burnt by the fires, caused by drought, lack of rainfall, sky-high temperatures and climate change. The biodiversity of the Australian wildlife has been extremely threatened, as well as iconic species being pushed to the brink of extinction. The most affected areas have been the southeast part of the country, in the states of Victoria and New South Wales. The most affected species have been the marsupials, like koalas, kangaroos, wombats and wallabies. More specifically, the koalas and kangaroos. The koala's natural habitat is the eucalyptus tree, containing highly flammable oil in their leaves, leaving their habitat burned to the ashes, and 30% of the koala population reduced. There have been multiple sightings of the koalas running up to cyclists, begging for water and shelter. This is not normal for the koalas, for they are usually shy. The next marsupial, the kangaroos, have been luckier than the koalas, fleeing from their burning habitat, the bushland. They have been quicker to get away, though they have unfortunately been run over a few times by, on by oncoming cars. My next point is the water. Firefighters have been bravely fighting against the glaring flames by dropping water bombs and watering the burning rainforest with hoses from their fire engines. This has taken a toll on the local rivers, the soil and ash travelling down to the rivers blocking dams, streams and other waterways, causing excessive amounts of algae and blocking fishes' gills as well as other life in the rivers washing them up on the banks. There have also been sightings of predators trying to feast on the survivors waiting to be rescued. Authorities have been doing the best they can by dropping sweet potatoes and carrots from aeroplanes for the survivors waiting to be rescued. There have even been reports of cats travelling 20 to 30 kilometres just to feast on the survivors. My next point is the global impact the fires have had. NASA has reported that the satellites have picked up on the ash travelling 11 kilometres into the atmosphere, reaching the stratosphere. That means the ash can now travel around the whole world, eventually coming back to Australia. This will cause breathing problems in asthmatic people, extremely bad air quality, as well as what is called freak weather. This has already been observed in Australia, with where it's supposed to be hot and sunny now, because it's the summer, there have been abnormal hailstorms, with hailstones the size of ping pong balls. This has also affected New Zealand with the ashes travelling and affecting the glaciers, caramelising them. It has now been reported that the glaciers have now a 20 to 30 percent more chance to melt faster. Now to my next point. Now the burning question. Can young people do anything about this? Can we save our planet? On the one hand, not really, since most of us aren't old enough to vote. We are not 18 and will not be taken seriously by politicians. On the other hand, we can start from small things, like talking to our local MPs, spreading the news to our family and friends, as well as encouraging plant-based diets and travelling responsibly. We can donate to charities and help koalas and authorities help the survivors. Wrapping up, I think that if we really come together, we can help save our planet and we can all live in a better place. Thank you for your attention.